Now before we get to completing a four-part harmony exercise, we need to also just quickly consider our different options when it gets to chord progression. Okay, so let's quickly revise that. So by now, I, I hope that you know that you have three different groups and that is your chords which belong to your tonic function, your dominant function and then your subdominant function. Okay, so just for interest sake, I know that often when the functions are explained, people would say, or your teacher might have said that it's a tonic function, it's a subdominant function, um, and it's not the F function. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, so let's just quickly fix this. Okay, so maybe your teacher taught you you've got the tonic, the subdominant, and the dom dominant function like this, and it's perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to just explain it slightly different, or I'm going to put the subdominant function on that side, just so that you can understand why we have something like the tonic, the subdominant and the do dominant function, you know, what, what is the relevance? The relevance is that um, this is an interval of a fifth apart, and then to the other side this is also an interval of a fifth. So if you think of, say for example, C major, the dominant would be G and the subdominant would be F. So from C to G is a perfect fifth and then from your F to your C is also a perfect fifth. So that's where it basically comes from. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at how it works. So um, if you look at the functions overall, you are, you are allowed to move from any tonic function chord to any dominant function chord and vice versa. Likewise, you are also allowed to move from any tonic function chord to any subdominant function chord and vice versa. When it gets to the subdominant function and the dominant function, and I think I'm just going to quickly create some space here for us, otherwise it's going to look too confusing on the board. Um, so let's just do that. Okay, so I'm allowed to go from any subdominant function chord to any dominant function chord, and uh, there's only one small vice versa. Okay, so tonic to dominant function, any chord can go um, either way, same with subdominant to tonic function, okay? So that's how it works. Now, within the function, when it gets to the tonic function, and I'm going to use a blue pen here, you are allowed to move from your primary chord to your secondary chord. In other words, from your tonic chord to your submediant chord, okay? But not other way around. And you'll see here that I wrote, uh, you know, some of the chords in brackets. So the ones that are in brackets um, show you the, the quality of the triads in a minor, and then the ones without brackets are the chords that you will find in a major. Okay, so I can move from my tonic chord to my submedian chord, but not other way around. Likewise, when it gets to my subdominant function, I see I forgot to write this here. Okay, when it gets to my subdominant function, again, I am allowed to move from my subdominant chord to my supertonic chord, but not vice versa. Now, when it gets to the dominant function, I can move <clears throat> from any dominant function chord to any dominant function chord. So I can go from a chord 5 to a chord 3, I can go from a 5 to a 7, I can go from a um, 7 to a 3, I can go from a 3 to a 7, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you can move freely within the dominant function. Now, let's just quickly look at the, um, 
not really exceptions, but additional um, options you have when it gets to court progression. So, like I said, when it gets to the subdominant function, you only move from the subdominant function to the dominant function. But there's one exception, one time where you are allowed to move from the dominant function to the subdominant function, and that is with chord 3. Either in its minor form, so that you get in the major, uh, in, in major keys, or in its major form, and that's of course in minor keys when the leading tone isn't raised. Okay, so you are allowed to move from a chord 3 to a chord 4. Okay, so that's the only time where you're allowed to move from the dominant function to the subdominant function. And then just one last one when it gets to chord progression, and that's chord seven. So chord seven prefers to actually go to chord one. Okay, so it can move freely within the dominant function, but when it moves outside of it to the tonic function, it prefers to go to chord one. Um, here and there you might have it that you can go to chord 6, but uh, just to keep it simple for you guys, uh, I'm going to, to just um, to tell you to go to chord 1. And that's basically your um, chord progression in a nutshell.